and welcome. Kimberly Castleberry here with another Just Ask Kim Marketing Roundup. And in today's news, Facebook is everywhere. I, I'm sure by now you've noticed it that every time you turn around, Facebook has a change this week. I guess change is in the air again. And Facebook seems to be setting the bar high for seeing how much change we can survive. Now, Facebook's motto indeed is iterate fast or iterate rapidly. And that means to make changes and to be comfortable making those changes, knowing that you can make an additional change. And so not really to worry too much about the implication of a single point change because it's all changeable. And that really is a good model for a lot of social businesses. Now, unfortunately, sometimes it gets carried away and we see weeks like this where everything iterates and then it iterates and then it changes again. And, you know, you just have to have to laugh at it. Or as my friend Mike Grady from over at Zing tab said he said Facebook does a great job of putting the busy in busyness and I have to agree so things that are going on what's new well we've already talked about graph search before if you haven't heard about that check out a prior post prior video that's definitely coming odds are you don't have it yet but many people do at this point again slow roll out on all these features that are coming to Facebook so be sure to check out a prior video if you haven't heard about that the news feed changes there's massive changes coming to your news feed the biggest and most interesting thing is that it's gonna make all the pictures great big and that includes the pictures and the little link that are with shared links that are shared for example by bloggers into Facebook this makes things much more engaging, much more dynamic. We think this is likely to create an improvement in overall click through of these links. Will that be the case? I haven't seen the stats, but I think it's fair to say that that's, that's a pretty good assessment of what is likely that most people that are seeing the new news feed are actually pretty happy with it. And the same goes with the new changes to the timeline and on your profile, when it switches over, the new change puts majority of the, the non-post stuff that you write, majority of stuff you don't write, such as who your friends are, your pins from Pinterest, you know, videos you've uploaded, things like that. Those are going in the left-hand side. And things you write, such as your status updates, links you share, things like that are going in the right-hand column. A lot of people are liking this. I think Facebook may have found a winner with this. They've only tried enough, right? Uh, I don't know if this is that we are so thrilled with it or whether we like this just enough to be happy with it and we hope they'll stop because the changes to, to timeline have just been unreal in the last year. Now, again, we always stress that when Facebook is rolling out new features that there is an increased prevalence of bugs and that is very true at the moment. The platform is very buggy. The platform is very unstable images and play various things don't load for some people and bugs are just all over somebody needs to get out the can of raid this is always true when facebook is rolling out features and just a couple of these features would be enough to trigger this so the fact that they're rolling out like 400 things is certainly enough to trigger a massive amount of temporary breakage so you'll just kind of have to roll with that unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it an Australian group discovered that during these timeline changes that events that you had attended, if your privacy settings were supposed to restrict that to you only, your friend only, or something very minor, it opened that up accidentally to friends of friends. Now in Facebook's, you know, good status, they fortunately very quickly closed that hole the moment they heard about it. So they didn't leave the hole open, but the hole was open. And the unfortunate problem here is that in many cases, friends of friends were able to see things like political views because of events you attended. They were able to see things like sexual orientation, again, because events you attended. And they could basically walk through all the events you'd ever attended and start to mentally make some decisions about you. That was supposed stuff that was supposed to be behind private doors. And so for a leak like that is just annoying. Um, in many cases, it's more than annoying, but fortunately that's been capped up. So you don't have to worry about it now, but there might've been some prior damage. Um, it appears that from what I'm seeing, only people who already had the new timeline when that happened were affected, but I don't know that that's hundred percent true. I can't seem to find an exact detail on that.
Now, in other changes, let's roll over to our business page because the big one in the news is the change to the cover image rules, which have been relaxed. You probably remember when they first released Timeline, they released these cover images and the cover images had all this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And it really was just, well, what can I do? And the answer was not much. Well, fortunately, most of that whole list has just been cropped off, all gone. A lot of things have returned to total permissions to do. And if we thought at first that perhaps this was a typo or we were going to see this reverted, this has now been stable for more than a week. I feel comfortable with the idea that this is staying. I think this was a great move by Facebook, if for no other reason than that they can't police 5,000 rules. So what are the rules? The rules are we still have a restriction that you can have no more than 20% text in an image. Fortunately, that was really hard to find out before, but fortunately, there's now a tool that helps us with that. I'm going to embed that for you in a blog post. It's really cool. If you're afraid that your image might be over or under, upload your image and check it against the tool. Really, really helpful way to keep your butt out of trouble. No sense in toying with fire here over a simple, stupid image that you can upload to this tool and it'll poke some boxes and you'll be done and you know if you're over or under 20% brilliant kind of little simple stuff you know we like when stuff is so simple it's like why didn't I think of that but I'm glad that somebody put it together so all the other rules are pretty much gone because now the restriction on no pricing you can put prices on there you can put the URL the links on there you can put calls to action you can put comp to contact information you can put references to like or share my page however the rules say, and here's a quote, covers can't be deceptive, misleading, or infringe on anybody's copyright. You must not encourage people to upload their cover to your personal to their personal timeline. Covers may not include images with more than 20% text. Yay, thank you, Facebook. Finally, something looks right. I, I, I think we can live with this, this is good. Be aware of this though. You want to make sure that your clients are updated. You want to make sure that your new pages are current. And it's time to take advantage of this because now we can do the things that we wanted to do with pages covers from the get-go. So now you've got a lot of fluid ability and a lot of flexibility to really work on that. So take advantage of that space. It's a great canvas. It's a great way to do some marketing. Just don't overdo it. Keep an eye on the text. Keep an eye on the promotional. Don't make it something that your fans won't want to see just because they've got to be there anyways, okay? Don't push your fans off. Also in Facebook pages is threaded comments and ranked replies. You've probably already seen this on a lot of the pages. Small pages needed to go in and activate a setting to have it happen. Large pages had it forced on them automatically. I'm pretty certain everybody's going to have this real soon. I think this is going to be all over the place. So I don't think we that, you know, if you're avoiding it, I don't think it can be avoided for very long. I'm pretty certain this is in full release and we're going to see it all over the place because it finally came out of its preliminary beta. It succeeded in the beta. And this gives us two things. One, it gives us threaded comments. And threaded comments are where you can reply to a specific comment and it hinges under that comment. So that's a threaded comment. And this enables you to have little sub conversations in your conversation. If you're familiar with WordPress, we've had this since, well, about version three, version two, eight, or it's a great tool, works on our blogs. We're used to having threaded comments and this is gonna give you ability to carry out dialogues with individual people and actually to extend engagement. This is gonna help with engagement on your page because you're going to be able to specifically reply and carry on micro conversations with individual people utilizing tags and the reply to reply. And you're gonna get an increase in engagement if you take advantage of this the right way. Of course, like any tool, you gotta to use it. Then there is ranked replies. And ranked replies looks at the replies that have gotten the most engagement, the most interest, the most active micro comments within their micro threads. Oh, fell over that word. Micro threads. And these micro threads are going to be filtered to the top when somebody comes and if there's a hundred comments, you might only see five, but rather than seeing the default first five or the default last five, now they're going to see the five that had the most activity on them because in theory, these were very active. These are the ones that most likely somebody might find interesting and worth reading. Kind of an interesting concept. 
I'd say that the only downside of all this at the moment is that it feels very odd to have these features on pages and to not yet have them on profiles. I think they're going to sort that out. I think that's coming with the timeline changes. I think that's coming with this whole big mess of stuff that we've gotten lately. I don't think you need to worry about that too much, but definitely take advantage of this as a way to build engagement because when you get engagement, when you get comments, you build edge rank. When you build edge rank, you get more visibility. When you get visibility, you get more comments and more social shares and it goes viral. And hopefully you're doing something with all this traffic and turning it into real leads, real sales, you know, and real income. So make sure you're taking it on out of the platform too as well because you got to generate real leads with it while you're at it. But more traffic is something you just can't go wrong with. So be sure you take advantage of that. In odd news, Facebook acquired the domain name InstaChecker. They don't seem real interested in it. They didn't buy all the additional little tail uh, post fix URLs, but they bought the top two. Insta something, sounds like Instagram, are they going to do something with it? I don't know. It's unusual that they'd only buy the top two, the domain, the dot, dot com and the dot net. That implies they're just squatting it. That implies they're making sure that somebody else can't come in and grab it and use that. Do they have a trademark on it? I don't know yet, but I don't know that we'll see anything out of this. I think that one's kind of a fizzle in the water. That could surprise us. We've talked about hashtags are coming to Facebook. Now, hashtags are that little little hash symbol. Some people call this a pound symbol, but internationally it's called a hash symbol. And a hash symbol is used in a number of ways. One of the predominant ways that it's used is to express emotion or feeling, a way to append a, a sentiment to an end of a concept or an end of a post. Another way that it's used is for search and filtering. And Facebook is very likely bringing out hashtags. We've seen a Wall Street Journal post about this, but I don't know of anybody personally that has seen it hit beta yet. I thought this would be here for our relatively soon, but they rolled out some surprise changes too. So it appears that we are just feature backlogged, that we're probably seeing feature-itis for the next two, three, four weeks. And you know, you might as well just get used to the change because everything's changing. And when hashtags get here, that's going to be cool. The ability to take advantage of those in the way that Instagram does is very much where Facebook is going. I expect these to look very much like Instagram's hashtags. Will hashtags retroactively become linked? I doubt it. And you can get an idea of that from looking at sites like Google Plus where hashtags exist as well, that not just on Twitter, but very, very big ecosystem of hashtags on Google Plus. And you'll discover that it's possible to type the syntax, type the word of the hashtag and get it to not link. Did you have to do a special move of sorts to get it to link? And because of that, that becomes embedded in the database. So it's very likely that old hashtags will not magically become linked. However, as we talked about in a prior video, you do need to pay attention to keywords. This is going to change open graphs. This is going to change search. This could mean more or less traffic for your pages, traffic for your profile, traffic for whatever you're working on. So pay attention to them. Now, how are people using hashtags? Well, there's a mobile ha web hashtag survey. And this, the link I'm going to give you is from Marketing Land, but it was a survey done by another team and they showed that majority of the people who use hashtags are on mobile devices. And that makes sense because with a hashtag, you're trying to conserve space and you're just adding an idea in an abbreviated form. And that majority of the people that use hashtags are using them to express an idea. But there's more to it than that. There's a lot of reasons that hashtags are being used. It's a very short article. I'd really like you to check that one out because I think if you're still not using hashtags yourself, if you're not really comfortable with hashtags, or if you have a client you need to talk to about hashtags, that article is really going to help you out because it's got the stats, it's got the details, it's got the stuff that clients want to see. You know how that goes. So speaking of stats and things that people want to see, Facebook has again returned to being the second in the second what social site in terms of number of video views and their video views were 558 million in February. Well, that's a lot of views. Now, however, their average time per viewer minutes per viewer MPV was only 19.9, but 19 minutes. If you consider it 
you know, as part of the overall ecosystem of things, other things people are doing on Facebook is a pretty good number. And I wasn't able to sort this out, but I'm reasonably certain that that actually only includes Facebook embedded video, Facebook uploaded video rather than embedded video. YouTube shouldn't be being counted there because that should count under a YouTube metric. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I would say that that is likely. Now, myself within business, I upload my videos to YouTube and then I post them to Facebook in embedded format. There's a reason I do that. There is some reasons, you know, some pros and cons to that. You really got to think about what's right for you. But YouTube, the Google YouTube property has an average minutes per viewer of 362. You know, that's a big difference than 19. And so I, I don't think they're in that race. But it does show the ongoing improvements and increase in use of video. Now, speaking of audience, there is an ability within Facebook to target ads to people that you already have in your client database. So if you have a database of current customers and you export a CSV file and it has their, their name and their email in it and you upload this to targeting and they haven't tur turned this feature off because the person can, can avoid that, but it's you upload this file into the ad tool and the ad tool will then let you target these customers who are already your customers. We know exactly who they are. You're going to target their profiles. It doesn't come back and tell you what their profiles are, but Facebook says, oh, I know that person and it puts them over there. Now that's assuming that they're using their Facebook email with the same email that they're on your list. It's not perfect, but it is a really, really powerful tool for companies that have big customer databases. Now a related tool that's just been released will look at that data and then we'll create look-alike targeting, where it will look at your fa uh, the, your data, the people that you imported, and it will say, what do they have in common? And it will algorithmically look at the things that these people have in common, and then it will attempt to find you some more people that have these things in common. This is really cool. This is a chance for Facebook to essentially build your demographic from the demographic profile that you give it by providing your customer list. Now, is that something that's going to apply to every small market or no? No, a lot of people aren't going to take advantage of that, but it's a very powerful tool. It's there if you've got customers doing advertising. This is definitely something to look at because of the ability to reach people who are like your customers, people who will likely respond to you as a business. And so you want to focus on that when you're looking at ads or when you're looking at marketing in general. If you've already got a demographic that likes you, pay attention to that demographic, you know? Don't, don't ignore that. And so this new tool is good stuff. Glad to see that from Facebook. Something I'm not glad to see is a little website called uh, facebookmessenger.biz. It's a little site that's not owned by Facebook. It's got a URL that's in violation of trademark. It is a Windows tool to run Facebook Messenger on your desktop. Unfortunately, it's unstable. It would be okay beyond the terms of, uh, beyond the trademark violation if it were actually stable, but it's not stable. It doesn't run well. It's got issues. There are some competition to it. I think we're going to see some more like that in the very near future. There are some good ones out there. This one, however, not so much. Facebook messenger.biz, eh, skip it. Hot or not, definitely a not. They have something that's hot though is Facebook made a change to its Android app that en enables them to push updates to the Android app without you having to go get the update. Now there's some times and places that that's going to be annoying. There's some times and places that you're going to have a situation where a bug crops up and all of a sudden you can't do anything about it by skipping an update. Facebook's got to be aware of that, but there's a lot that happens, particularly in terms of privacy, security, stability, that people often tend to skip getting updates, and so they end up not having the security patches, the stability patches, or patches for privacy fixes put into place. So now Facebook's made a change that when you update your Android app next, it will say, can we push data over the network to you? You're going to say, yeah, because that's what we do. And Facebook is then going to start just keeping its own app up to date on its own self. 
So there you go. That's what Android is doing. Now, it's something else Android's doing, and this is really cool. There is an upcoming press release or press conference, and Facebook is expected to make an announcement. What kind of announcement? Well, they say their new home. What kind of home? Probably an Android home. Here's where those rumors start to fly. It's been a lot of speculation over the last I guess two years, maybe three, of uh, people talking about an Android phone. And first we talked about whether Facebook would release its own phone, whether it would be a, a Facebook phone. You know, you'd go into the, the mobile store and you'd buy the Facebook phone. But it definitely showed signs that Facebook was aware that entering the mobile arena as an individual competitor was a bad idea. That, that market is vicious. That market has a ton of cash to throw around. That market has established brand reputation. It is not easy to enter that market. And so Facebook putzed around and putzed around and no one was sure what Facebook was doing. Well, we heard rumors that they teamed up with HTC. This turns out that it's very likely true. That's what we're expecting to see on Wednesday when they hold this press conference, that an HTC phone is coming out with many of the same embedded Facebook features as the new iPhones have. In fact, it's probably even a little more. I expect to see some home screen functionality. I expect to see some functionality of things that the Androids do very well and can do that iPhones can't. The reason they can't is because of how the Apple ecosystem really sandboxes an app but when brought onto the Android platform, the ecosystem is more open, and so there's going to be a lot more flexibility. Will be interesting to see what they release. Will that be it? I don't know for sure, but it sure is fun to guess. All right, what are your guesses? What do you think? Are you loving or hating all the Facebook changes? How are you surviving it? What's your favorite? What's your least favorite? Which one's driving you nuts? I look forward to your comments in the box below, and I will catch you in the next Marketing Roundup.